Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. Hi, Rebels. This is Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls, the interview. I'm your host, Taya Diggs, and today we're talking to Neri Oxman, who read us the story of architect Zaha Hadid. It's an awesome episode, so go take a listen if you haven't already. Neri, can you please introduce yourself? My name is Neri, Neri Oxman. I am an architect, inventor, and a professor at MIT, where I head a research group focused on the building materials of the future and the technologies to create them. Our main inspiration in the group is the natural world, and our motivation is to create materials, structures, systems, and buildings that emulate and even collaborate with the natural and the biological world. Examples include structures that have been three-dimensionally printed by glass that act as giant optical lenses, a building facade that is infused with biological pigments offering protection from sunlight, a wearable device designed to convert sunlight into biofuel, a little bit like a wearable plant, and a five meter tall tower made from the most abundant biopolymers on our planet, which were sourced from shrimp shells, from apple skins, and from fallen leaves. Where does your passion for architecture and design come from? Is it something that you were interested in as a kid? I was fortunate to live and to breathe architecture throughout my life from the time I was a very, very young child. Both of my parents practiced and taught architecture, and my grandfather was an important civil engineer in Haifa, Israel, where I was born and raised. One thing that stands out about Zaha's story is how often she was the only woman in the room. Is this something you've experienced in the architecture world? Indeed, I have experienced the gender divide myself. And unfortunately, it is still apparent across the board and in many other fields, including physics, music, the tech startup world, even in the White House. Most of human history is patriarchal, male-dominant. But things are improving as more women enter the workforce, making significant contributions to society and to the environment. Zaha Hadid seemed to build impossible buildings. Can you talk about one of the greatest challenges you've faced in a project? Oh, we have suffered and rejoiced in so many exciting challenges. Last year, my team and I had a show at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City where we installed a large pavilion, a large structure made of silk. It was created with the help of a very large robot and 17,532 silkworms. Now, just for context, the average number of silk cocoons that are boiled to create a single t-shirt is 1,000. 1,000 silkworms lose their lives to create a single shirt. In this project, however, we demonstrated that we can create a very large structure made of silk without boiling a single cocoon. And what's more is that we enabled a healthy metamorphosis of the silkworm into the moth throughout the construction period. So this project really celebrated co-design in co-construction with the natural world. As part of this project, of course, we faced so many challenges, and the main challenge, of course, was scale. Wow, that sounds amazing. So when you're thinking about creating a new project, how do you start and what steps do you take? A great project like a great symphony begins not with an answer, but with a question. Can you build structures with silk without compromising the lives of silkworms? How can you 3D print with glass? And if you're successful, is it possible to harness solar energy? If you're lucky, a great project will also culminate with a question, while answering others, of course. I like to think that questions are the best kind of answers, because they allow us to remain curious while constantly reaching out. 
Mary, if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice when you were a kid, what would it be? Keep a journal and draw and write and write and draw. Allow yourself to be reflective and to learn as you observe the natural world. Keep a journal and draw and write and write and draw. And finally, what makes you a rebel girl? What makes me a rebel girl? <laughs> I believe that the best kind of rebels are actually quiet ones. They are good listeners. They are people who can accept and unite multiple points of view from a wide array of rich disciplines into a single and clear and bright vision that everyone can understand and be inspired by. I like to believe that my parents gifted me this ability not to only problem solve, but to problem seek. And this ability has enabled me to remain creative in my work as well as in my personal life and always see every challenge as an opportunity and always see a solution in every problem and always stick to the positive. Thank you, Neri. And thank you for listening. If you like the show, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and share it with all of your friends. Catch you next time. Stay Rebel!